Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading Rumpelstiltskin. Wiggle, snap, story time. Long, long ago, there was a dad and he had a kid, a daughter actually. That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, King. Thanks a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning. I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have Melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of Melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. What? No, that can't be. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me. Well, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay, I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. What would you do if you were there? The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone, and in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good, I want more. So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return. Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do. So I, I called out. Uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do you? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. Wow, that is so mean. And he laughed all crazy-like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am, give me that baby. Ah, watch out! Okay, funny story, I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? 
I began to guess. Paul, nah, Mike, nah, Mark, nah, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S-E-A-N. Nope. Sean spelled S-H-A-U-N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guessed hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. But seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you're just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> the brunch buffet was pretty good too. Smoked salmon with poi-fection, mwah! The end. Wow, that was so much fun. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time, bye. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Wizard of Oz. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> Uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me of course, he's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog, Toto. <laughs> Hi, Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. <laughs> That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy loud sound, it sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow. Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Toto, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh. Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow, okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that, a kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? 
No way, I wouldn't even squish a fly, Ask Toto. But you did squish her, or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise. Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful. She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? Uh, a witch? Oh, no. Uh, but you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah, uh, where? Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the west. And she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey. She's gone! Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst! No, no! See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears! Poof! Like magic! Yay! The munchkins love magic! Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out! Ah! Oh, oh, I'm sorry! I, I, it was only a trick! I thought you liked magic tricks! Magic's supposed to be nice! That was scary! Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. But you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. My house did the flying, but I can't fly. I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen. All hail queen, what's your name? Dorothy? All, All hail, hail queen, queen Dorothy. Dorothy. Hooray, yeah. hurrah. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. Oh, All hail, hail the queen, queen Dorothy. Our queen. But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up! Quick, someone tell a joke! Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house! <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas, and boy, my house is tired! <laughs> that was so funny! Ooh. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch, and they're also way too big for our Munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. 
Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? Maybe. <laughs> hey, you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. Ugh, ah! get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a break. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 3, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles, and finally, Ew! I'm pooped! Let's just sit down and rest for a while. Okay. Wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something? I'm never hungry. And that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then, yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East, and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The Munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow. But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. 
then you came along. And now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think I hear it again. <laughs> Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never. <laughs> Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life, too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad. I think. It is sad. Enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go! Wait! Oil can! Good call. Okay, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 4, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! Hey, look! 475 schmiles to Emerald City? I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in schmiles. In Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I. But maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope. I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness, and happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> okay. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the wicked witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me, and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. <coughs> the tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me, and without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story, I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the city of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more schmiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? Oh, 
Woo, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow, that sounds scary. See, I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know, I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait. <laughs> We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage. And that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it, don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo, you did it. I knew you could. <laughs> Cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work! <laughs> now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Nope, nope, not okay. What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas have the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming. Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it. Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. Ah! Phew, that was close. Great job, Tinny. Hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Dress straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. 
Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 6. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh, good. I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? OK, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no, we're floating away from the yellow brick road. And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West, the scariest witch of all. The witch? Oh no. What are we gonna do? Well, I can't swim, I'll fall apart. And I'll rest. Paddle harder. They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail and I'll pull you to shore. <laughs> ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. <gasps> there he is! Shoo, ah! go away! Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back. Of course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the Scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no! Incoming! Oh shush. I'm here to save ya. Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob. Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West. She's a tough nut. We will. See ya. <laughs> well, gang, shall we? Yup. I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers. Oh, poppies. They're so pretty. <laughs> yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beast fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless! I'm getting sleepy. Oh, me too. Sweet dreams! <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on! Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy voiced. Yeah, 
Nighty night. That's right. Go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for Mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha! They're mine. Wait a second. They're stuck. The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic. And my flying monkeys. The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys. Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle. Aye, aye. Woo <laughs> How is Dorothy going to get home now? Sleep tight, boys. When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine. All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. <laughs> this frightened the monkeys. <laughs> and they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Okay, that was scary. But look, come back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second, these shoes are supposed to be magical. And the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. That is amazing. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West. Oh no. But it's a good thing you got out. The poppies are very dangerous. Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them. But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them. We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us. But my friends are way too big for mice to carry. They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew, piece of cake. The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here, we'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion! Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch. <laughs> Eek! Mouse! See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends. Thanks again for helping us. Anytime. Goodbye. And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 8, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road, and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, OK. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. OK, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful. Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I 
want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But, you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next! Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not going to do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin. The Scarecrow pulled into pieces and the lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the witch's castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh, no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Geez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dared try to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. 
Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No, you give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! Now look what you've done! What's another mess? You make me clean all day anyway. Not that! I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it! Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking... Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun! No time to explain now! We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch! Come on! Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? huh? I'll explain later, too. Let's go see the wizard! Oh yeah! Now he'll grant our wishes! Hooray! Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her! Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm um, actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard. And well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. We came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever. So he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the Scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the Scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalidas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the Tin Man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the Tin Man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalidas. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. 
They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkey saw them and swooped in. But the lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... I was thinking... I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the Sapphire Slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the Sapphire Shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy, I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Oh, Dorothy, do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec, my house is in Munchkinland. Huh, I wonder where Auntie M and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but Maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realized I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch. Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. There. So what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. So tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh. So, what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. 
Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbling cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili, award-winning. Spicy, but not too spicy, light on the beans. Oh, okay, but what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right, let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. And what did that do? Made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. <laughs> do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey, how do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow. Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> So, most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm, one time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough. Everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all. I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick-or-treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Night Before Christmas. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi guys, my name is Holly and I'm gonna tell you about the most epic thing that ever happened to my family ever. It was this one time I actually met him. You know, the guy in red. St. Nick, Kris Kringle, you probably know him best as Santa Claus. <laughs> so get this, twas the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I mean, we were stirring, cause we couldn't wait for Christmas morning. Aw, that's so sweet. This is my kid brother, Gabriel. His favorite day of the year is Christmas, so you can imagine how excited he was. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The kids made a lot of preparations for Christmas Eve and for the arrival of Santa. They hung their stockings, they baked cookies, and made a plate for Santa. Don't forget a carrot for Rudolph. They tidied their rooms, they brushed their teeth, they wrapped presents, and finally they said goodnight to their parents. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her handkerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled in for a long winter's nap. Everyone was sleeping peacefully and anticipating the best morning ever, when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window, I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. Ooh, this is so exciting. Whoa, what happened? It's freezing. I heard something coming from outside. Take a look. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. Gabe, look over there. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. Whoa, I always knew reindeer existed. I just knew it. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. I can't believe this is actually happening. Santa Claus is coming to our house. No one at school is going to believe me when I tell them. Look, look at the reindeer. They're so, so magical. The reindeer and sleigh got closer and closer to the kids' house. 
More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Ho, ho, ho! Now Dasher and Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder, on Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all! Ho, ho, ho! Wow, this is so fun! As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. He's here, you guys, he's really here. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. The reindeer must be so tired from going to so many kids' houses tonight. Yeah, I hope they like the carrots we left them. Maybe they will want some hot chocolate? Maybe. Let's go downstairs. I think I hear a rustling in the chimney. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Gabe and Holly were waiting by the chimney as good old St. Nick barreled down towards them. I see his boots. I see his bag full of gifts. And like that, Santa popped down the chimney and the kids got to see him in real life. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. I can't believe it. It's actually really, really him. Look, a bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. He was even more magical looking than they imagined. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. Do you think he has the art supplies I wanted in there? I really hope he has the science kit I asked for. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. While the kids wondered about their gifts, Santa took a look around with a smile. Look, Gabe, I think he likes the note that you left him. He's laughing. <laughs> he had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Yeah, it was Def the reindeer joke that did it. I mean, come on, a reindeer walks into an ice cream bar? Yeah, yeah, Gabe, we all know that joke. You've told it like a hundred times. Meanwhile, Santa was making his way around the room, smiling at family pictures, filling stockings, and warming himself by the fire. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. Hey, Santa, welcome to our house. We hope you're having a magical night. Whoa, he sees us. I hope we aren't in trouble. But a wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Shh. He's unloading the presents. He spoke not a word, but went straight to work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And after Santa was done with all the presents, things got a little silly. He took off his boots and sat by the fire to rest. We didn't want him to miss out on our awesome Christmas cookies, so... OMG, I love it. Here you go, sir, or er, um, Santa, um, St. Nick. Hello there, kids. Why, thank you so much. I made the green Christmas tree ones. They're lemon flavored. Mmm, these are delicious. The best cookies I've had tonight. Although I was in Italy and had some of the most delicious biscotti. Oh, oh, oh that was a Christmas treat. Whoa, that is so cool. And then in Holland, I had these scrumptious cookies called speculoos. I wish we could go on a Christmas cookie world tour. Sounds like a sweet dream. <laughs> oh, do you want to play a game with us? It's our Christmas Eve tradition to play pin the tail on the reindeer. Well, it's not a real reindeer, just a paper one. They decorated a gingerbread house. They wrapped gifts for their presents. They drank hot cocoa. They played dreidel. They listened to Santa tell stories from the North Pole. Yay, I'm so happy. Finally, the kids started to feel really tired. It was the middle of the night after all. Ho, 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 well, this was so much fun, kids. But I should get going. I have so many houses to visit before morning. 
Yeah, we should get to bed. Thank you so much, Santa. See you same time, same place next year. Sure, just keep yourself on the nice list and not that naughty one. Ho, 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 ho. Then you'll see me again next year. Say hi to Mrs. Claus for us. Will do. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney, he rose. Come on, let's go look out the window. Hi, Rudolph. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like a down of a thistle. See you next year, Santa! Then I won't even bother my sister. I'll be well behaved, I promise. <laughs> Me too! <laughs> I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy, Happy Christmas, Christmas to all and, and to all a good, good night. night. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye! Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Snow Queen. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, I'm Gerda. I grew up in a place called Florida. You know, where everything is always happy and fun and super sunny. <laughs> Siggy. Sorry, Gerd. Wally overshot that one. Oops, can't control these things sometimes. Well, that's all right, guys. Who am I to get in the way of some fun in the sun, eh? <laughs> Just don't forget some sunscreen. As you can tell, I had a lot of friends, but no one made me happier than my most special friend of all. <sighs> Kay. <laughs> we did everything together, like fly kites, and build sandcastles, and make flowers. A rose for you, my lady. And go on awesome vacations to Kay's grandma in Alaska. Alaska, here we come! <laughs> hey Kay, what do Alaskans order at a restaurant? Um, I don't know. Ice burgers? <laughs> Get it, ice burger. <laughs> that was so funny. Burr, sure is cold out here. Good thing I packed my winter coat. What, it's not real. So anyway, Kay and I had a really fun trip in Alaska, but I was ready to go back home to sunshine and happiness. <laughs> That's when things got really, really not happy. There we were, sitting with the snowmen and eating ice cream when suddenly, ah, snow bees, oh, the meanest bees ever. Go get your own ice cream. Well, maybe we can give them just a little. Sharing is caring, eh? Oh. Okay, but no more than one lick each. Ow, ow, ee, that hurts, ow. Stop, stop, me no snow bees. Oh, stop right there. Oh no, I hope they'll be okay. But it was too late. The snow bees had already stung Kay like a hundred times. Not to mention finish all his ice cream. We'll not let some snow bees ruin our vacation. Right, Kay? Right? Hmm. Mm, okay, I guess I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Get away from me! <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny joke, okay? <laughs> no, but seriously. I've had enough of your happiness, okay? Leave me alone. But I, I, I don't understand. I thought we were BFFs forever. You gave me a rose! I hate roses. Okay, you're probably just in pain from all those snow bee stings. Not to worry, I know just the trick. Nothing like a good reindeer sled ride to get you out of the blues. No, I hate reindeer. I hate sleds. I hate everything. Okay, I get it. It was my fault you got stung, but we were besties. <laughs> Guess I better get going. Sunshine State, here I come. I totally thought Kay would come after me, but he didn't. I was so angry at Alaska, I vowed never to come back again. Oh no, I hope she's okay. They're back! Wahoo! Did you get me that snow globe I asked for? Uh-oh! How was I gonna tell them what happened? Uh, hi guys! So, funny story, Kay's actually not here. I thought you went with Kay to his grandma. I mean, if you wanted some time away from us, you could've just said so. What happened was we were eating ice cream next to a snowman when a bunch of super mean snow bees totally attacked us and stung Kay like a zillion times. And he got really mad at me for letting him get stung. So he ordered me to leave him alone in Alaska. I can't believe I totally ruined everything. That boy is always happy and kind. 
Not to mention, he's got stars in his eyes whenever he sees you. Are you sure that was what happened? Yes, I'm sure. Except... Except what? Except those snow bees sure look strange. They were all blue and icy and mean. Maybe they transferred their meanness. So that's what made Kay not so happy. Oh my, poor Kay. I'll get to the bottom of this. If it's the last thing I do. Yeah, yeah, I know I said I'd never go back, but this was for Kay. Hit it, back to Alaska. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I was determined to find Kay and bring back his happiness. Oh, we got this, guys. Oh, just a little further. There, hold up. That's where we had our ice cream, just beside that snowman. Kay? Kay? It looks like we're too late. Hmm, if only the snowman could talk. I bet he'd know where Kay went. Mm-mm-mm, mm-mm-mm. What's that, Mr. Snow? Mm-hmm, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I had an idea. Ah, uh, finally, something other than that carrot nose. You know, I can't even smell out of that thing. Wow, this is so fun. Okay, okay, now please, Mr. Snow, can you tell me if you've seen a dude, yay hi, leave from this spot? Why, yes, yes I did. What a brave young man, headed right down to the River of Doom. River of Doom? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Did I say doom? I mean flume. Like where kids go on log flume rides in the summer. It's right over there. Phew, <laughs> so there was still hope I could catch up with Kay at the river. If only I could get through all this snow. Don't move, Kay. On my way. Oh, this must be it. Kay, okay, are you there? Can you hear me? I sure can. Would you keep it down? Sorry. Um, did you happen to see a guy, yay hi, come through here? Sure, I saw him. You did? Oh, great. Do you know where he went? He was standing right by the frozen ice water. Could have left, could have fallen in. Fallen in? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I hope he'll be okay. Relax, girl. I need a quick rinse anyway. Nope, all clear. Guess he left. Oh, thank goodness. Do you have any idea where he may have gone? There's a rose garden not too far off. Kinda nice if you like roses. That's it! Kay loves roses. I was positive I'd find him there and we could finally leave this cold, scary place. Kay? Kay, where are you? Kay! Suddenly, I heard a voice. Who goes there? Uh, Kay? Is that you? No, it's me! But I still didn't see anyone. Me? Me who? Me, the tree! Hello! Ah! You can talk! I can even bark! <laughs> Get it? A little tree humor. I was just looking for my friend Kay. Yay, hi. Pretty cute if you ask me. Have you seen him? I have not, but... But? The scarecrow would know. Hey, Scary, did you see any guys come through here? Totally. He was heading towards the evil Snow Queen's palace. Shame. Seemed like a nice dude. The evil Snow Queen? Yeah. Coldest lady in all of Alaska. <laughs> Feel that chill? That's her, all right. Uh-oh. She better watch out. Well, she is not gonna lay one icy finger on my friend. Sorry to interrupt. We were just looking for a young girl wearing a blue dress. Usually travels with a small pup named Toto. Hey, you look awfully familiar. Have we met? Uh, I don't believe so. I've got one of those faces, I guess. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, we were just finishing up a conversation. How about a yellow brick road? Have you seen one of those? I'm gonna let you guys hash this out. Scary, if you could just tell me which way to the palace, I'll be on my way. Straight ahead, lady. But be careful. Real dark and scary in those parts. Well, nothing's gonna stop me. I'm coming for you, Kay. Oh, and bye, guys. Good luck finding that blue dress girl and brick road. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Gerda marched through the icy forest on her search for Kay. Then she remembered a safety rule her scout leader had taught her. When in doubt, shout. <laughs> Kay, Kay, where are you, Kay? Who are you? 
Who are you? I was taking a nap and you woke me up. So I'll ask the questions. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hobsworth, Girl Scout Ambassador and President of my school's Botany Club. Very impressive. I'm Lady Shannon Von Sol, Sorceress of Eternal Summer. It doesn't look or feel like eternal summer around here. Oh, well, not here, obviously. Come see. Sorry about all that shouting. I'm looking for my friend Kay. Word on the street is he went towards the Snow Queen's palace. Oh, she's a brat. Maybe even evil. Oh no, I hope he'll be okay. Here we are. Still not getting any summer vibes. <laughs> oh wow! Awesome, it's like paradise in here. It looks just like Florida. That's where I'm from. <laughs> It's always like summer there. Wonderful. Then you'll feel right at home here. Well, I can't stay. I have to go find Kay. But maybe we'll stop by on our way home? Oh, just stay for a bit. I have popsicles. Hmm, I love popsicles, but no thank you. I really have to go. Suit yourself. Oh, okay, so how do I get out? Gerda looked around but couldn't see the door anywhere. She hadn't been there long. How could she have already gotten lost? Everywhere I look, there's just more palm trees. They're everywhere. Oh, where did that sorceress lady go? Owie! Oh, that's gotta hurt. Darn coconut. Oh, oh, actually, now that I'm sitting, I realize I'm pretty tired. Oh, you know, I think I'll just sleep a little and just, uh, then I'll go find Kay. Gerda drifted off to sleep and found herself in a crazy dream. She had found Kay, except he was different. He was a prince. Wow, hey Kay. But Kay ignored her. Kay, I came to rescue you. Suddenly a beautiful woman appeared. She was dressed head to toe in white silk and sparkly crystals. Wow, you're really shiny. <laughs> she bent to give Gerda a kiss on the top of her head. Wow, just like my grandma does. But when the woman in white kissed her, Gerda's hair turned to ice. Okay, not like my grandma. Then Gerda realized she was becoming completely frozen. A curse? Oh no. Kay, help. But Kay looked on as if he didn't even hear her. Kay. <gasps> Scary, I hope Kay hasn't become frozen. Okay, I had my nap, now I gotta go. But Gerda realized she still didn't know the way out of eternal summer. Where is Lady Shannon Von Sol? Hello? Hello, lady. It's like she tried to trap me in here. Wait a second. Doesn't sorceress really just mean witch? Oh, no. She's a witch. Not necessarily. Oh? Sorcery is just magic. So technically, there could be a nice sorceress. Oh, OK. But she isn't. Lady Shannon Von Sol isn't nice? She won't let me leave. I'm a prisoner. At night, I sleep in a cage. Well, it's really cold outside. I don't think a toucan can survive out there. I bet a toucan can too survive out there. Just wait till she puts you in a cage. Why would she want to put me in a cage? She's obsessed with summer and sunshine. You're from Florida, so you're like the most summery, sunshiny creature she's ever seen. Trust me, you got to get out of here. OK. Well, how about this? You show me the door, and I'll smuggle you out with me. Deal! So Gerda followed the toucan through the eternal summer paradise, past all the palm trees and coconuts. Here it is! Let's bust out! Do you have a coat? Do I have a coat? I'm a bird! What do you think? So sassy. <gasps> I have an idea! Fly in here! <laughs> and where do you think you're going? What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. I said, where do you think you're going? I'm just gonna find my friend Kay. Kay? <laughs> but it's much too cold out here. Come back inside. Don't listen to her. Excuse me? I didn't say anything. Psst. Let me out. Okay, I definitely heard something that time. Now! Run! Gerda ran and ran and ran and ran and ran, but the thing about Alaska is... Ice! Oh. oh, owie! Oh no, I hope she's okay.
You're pretty clumsy, huh? <sighs> well, I'm not used to all this ice and snow. Brr, neither am I. It's freezing out here. Oh, I know, but I have to save my friend Kay. He was taken by the Snow Queen. Oof, she's the evilest queen ever. Yeah, I heard she's mega scary. Oh, poor Kay. See, doesn't he look nice? He's probably so cold and afraid. Hey, what's the big idea? Stop it. Are you trying to tell me something? Can you speak? Un poquito. Hmm, is that Spanish? Took a little bit of Spanish in school. Hola, mi nombre es Gerda. Hola, Erda. Mi nombre es Pete. <laughs> nice to meet you, Pete. Unfortunately, I don't know more Spanish than that. Do you two can? No, but I speak fluent bird. Oh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> 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 Whoa, this place is crazy. Pete here tells me there's a princess who lives nearby who just married a prince. Sounds nice, but I'm not really in the mood for a love story right now. He says the prince looks just like your friend Kay. Really? Married? Kay? Kay? And he's a prince? Whoa, just like my dream. We have to go to that palace right now. He says it's one mile as the raven flies, but on foot, it'll take about 24 hours. A whole day? Well, we better get going then. Pete has an interesting idea. Huh? Ready for liftoff? Oh, um, is this safe? We're birds. We do this all the time. Relax. Gerda tried to relax, which was hard because, you know, she was being carried over a snowy mountain by a bunch of birds. But once she was brave enough to open her eyes, she saw that it was really quite beautiful. Wow. <laughs> right? We birds got a pretty decent view. Wow, this is so fun. There it is. I see the palace. Oh, I really hope Kay's in there. Oh, gracias, Pete. Other birds, thank you all. I'm forever indebted to you. Well, here goes nothing. Much better in here. Nice and toasty. Hello. Kay, princess, hello. I'm the princess. Who are you? I'm Gerda P. Hopsworth. <laughs> I'm looking for my friend. I think you may have married him. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. He'll be so happy to see you. Come, sit by the fire and warm up. W where is he? Darling, come down. There are some friends here to see you. Kay, is that you? What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 5. Here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, is that you? My name is Kevin, but I suppose you could call me Kay. Oh, he's not Kay. I'm sorry, dear. Not as sorry as I am. Are you all right? Gerda was not all right, and she told the prince and princess all about it. I lost my friend. Kay? Yes, Kay, and I think the Snow Queen has him. Oh, she's bad news. I know, that's what everyone says. And then I heard that someone who looked just like my Kay had come here and married the beautiful princess. But you're not Kay at all. Oh, I should have never come to Alaska. <laughs> Alaska? You're not in Alaska. I'm not? No, Alaska is far, far away from here. This village is called Schnee. Schnee? Great, so now I'm lost too. Just add that to the list. I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm sad, I'm scared, and I'm lost. <laughs> That's so sad. Maybe we can help. The prince and princess invited Gerda to spend the night. And I don't know if you've ever spent a night in a palace, but it was pretty nice. There was delicious food. <laughs> Big warm beds near cozy warm fireplaces. And in the morning, the prince and princess gave Gerda her very own golden carriage and a beautiful white horse. They gave the toucan a warm vest and a tiny fur cap. And for their journey, plenty of food, lanterns, and a compass. The Snow Queen's palace is in a place called Glacier in the north. Do you know how to use a compass? Allow me. 
I'm a bird with excellent navigational skills. North is... That way! That's south. Wishful thinking, I guess. Good luck. Thanks for everything, your highnesses. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gerda and the toucan set off for the north, feeling quite luxurious in their golden carriage. Wow, that is so cool. The only bad thing about a golden carriage is it's a little flashy and has the potential to attract robbers. What a nice carriage you have. Um, thank you. We'll just be taking it and everything else you've got, princess. Oh, I'm not a princess. Hush up and hop out. Leave her alone. <coughs> ah, I want to keep the girl. Say what now? Absolutely not. Don't mind her. I'm the real boss around here. You can be my new best friend. It gets lonely out here living a life of crime. Gerda didn't see how she had much of a choice. These people had swords after all. And the little one was a biter. Aw, cute bird. I'll keep him too. Great. Giddy up, horsey. How are they ever going to get out of this one? So now Gerda and the toucan were off on a new and totally unexpected leg of their journey. This time to live with the band of robbers deep in the snowy woods of Schnee, wherever that was. This is it. Home sweet home. It's nice. Thanks. We have quite the collection. Check it out. I even have a pet reindeer. You should let him out so he can get some fresh air and exercise. Are you nuts? He'll run away. You look naughty, too. I'll go find a cage for you. We gotta get out of here! Maybe it's not so bad. Easy for you to say. It's like the sorceress's place all over again. What are you two whispering about? Nothing. Nothing. Good. In your cage. Okay. New best friend, let's play a game. What game? Sword fight. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The little robber girl had just challenged Gerda to a sword fight. Sword fight? A play sword fight. But you actually have a sword. That makes it pretty real in my book. Fine, we won't play. It's time for dinner anyway. Come and get it, everybody. Come and get your slop. Mmm, looks delicious. You must give me the recipe. Oh, it's not for you. There are pellets in your cage. Pellets, yum. Probably better than slop. Eat up, girl. You know, I'm really not hungry. Maybe I should get going. We, we should get going. Oh, no, you don't. You're my new best friend. You stay here with me. But I have to rescue my friend, Kay. It's very important. Kay will be fine. Forget Kay. Sit. Eat. Oh, no. I hope they'll be okay. Later, after their dinner of slop, the robber girl showed Gerda her room. Wow, you have a lot of birds. I love birds. That's why I was so excited to find you and your parrot. Toucan! Whatever. I don't want to. Fine. Why do they all have little strings tied to their legs? Because I don't want them to fly away, obviously. But why do you trap your creatures and make them stay? I told you, I get very lonely out here. These are the only friends I ever had until you came along. Now, let's go to sleep. You sleep with your sword? Always. Gerda lay down near the robber girl, making sure that she was far enough away from her sharp sword, of course. The girl went to sleep immediately, but Gerda couldn't sleep. She was too worried about Kay. How would she ever rescue him if she was also trapped? Hey, girl. Me? Yeah, you. I saw your body, Kay. You did? When? Shh. A few days ago. I just got tied up here yesterday. Where is he? He was with the Snow Queen at her palace. How do you know it was him? I heard the Snow Queen call him by name. Did she seem very mean? Oh, yes. She's very wicked. Poor Kay. Oh, I miss him so much. How are they ever going to get out of this one? I just want to find him and save him. He was my best friend in the whole world. Be quiet. You're with the girl. 
But the robber girl was not sleeping at all. She had heard everything. She wanted a friend more than anything in the world, but she knew she couldn't keep Gerda from Kay. She had to help. The next morning, very early, so early the sun wasn't even awake, the robber girl woke Gerda. Hey. What time is it? Time to get you to your friends, Kay. Huh? Come on. You're letting us go? I want to be your friend and I want you to stay here forever. But for some reason, I want to help you. Weird, right? Not weird at all. That's what a real friend would do. Really? Yes. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Now you be careful. Don't run too fast and drop my friend. Giddy up. The reindeer didn't have to be told twice. He took off for Glacier, prancing and leaping with joy. Woohoo! Let's go get Kay! Wait for me! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure! Come on! Chapter 7, here we go! Wiggle, snap, story time! Gerda, Toucan, and the reindeer had traveled all day through snow and ice and still no sign of Glacier. We've been walking forever. Doesn't this thing go any faster? Why don't you fly? <laughs> My wings got tired. Hey, reindeer, can you talk? Hello? Hmm? Oh, yes, but my name isn't Reindeer, it's Clyde. Oh, hi, Clyde. Pleased to be officially introduced. <laughs> Clyde, are you sure we're going the right way? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, at least I think I'm sure. You think you're sure? He spent the last couple years in captivity. Give him a break, Toucan. Why don't you fly up and check out the bird's eye view? Great idea, Clyde. Toucan, can you do that? I liked it better when you didn't talk. So, Clyde, tell me about Glacier. Oh, it's the most beautiful place in the world. Wow, that is so cool. Have you been to Florida, though? I think that's the most beautiful place. Not really my scene, but I have some cousins who go there every year for Christmas. Christmas. Wait a second. Do you know Santa's reindeer? Yeah, Donner and Blitzen and I go way back. Oh, <laughs> so can you fly or what? Good question. I never tried. What? I know for a fact that humans can't fly, and that didn't stop me from trying. I'm fly! Ow. That's how I broke my arm. See? You can still see the scar. <laughs> wow. I know. So anyways, you should totally try to fly. Okay, maybe you should hop off first. Good thinking. Okay, just run really fast and then leap. Sorry, totally my bad on that one. What happened here? I tried to fly. Oh boy, stick to what you know, Clyde. I think maybe Santa's reindeer eats some magic oats or something like that. <laughs> or maybe it's like Peter Pan and you gotta think happy thoughts. Or maybe you just gotta believe in yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, you see anything up there, Toucan? Yeah, I saw a palace just outside the forest. That way. Great, let's go, gang. Wow, this is so fun. When Gerda and her friends stepped out of the woods, they stopped, stunned. The palace was huge and sparkly, as if it were covered in a million diamonds. Trees were covered in shimmering icicles, and ice sculptures of animals dotted the land for as far as the eye could see. These are amazing. They look so real. Told you this place was pretty. It is, but we have work to do, people. Or, uh, animals. <laughs> Let's go find Kay. Kay? Hello? Are you there? Kay? Kay? And suddenly, there he was in the distance, Kay in the flesh. Kay, it's really you. Wait, what is he doing? Kay, it's me, Gerda, your best friend. Stop it. Why is your friend trying to shoot us with frozen arrows? Yeah, that's not very friendly. Guys, that's not Kay. I mean, it is, but he's not himself. He must be under the Snow Queen's spell or something. We have to save him. Uh-oh, she better watch out. Wait, I think I might know how to break the spell. You do? There's an old story about the Snow Queen that I heard as a youngster. Yeah? And I don't know if it's true or just one of those myths. Yeah? But legend has it that to break the Snow Queen's spell over someone... Spit it out, Clyde! 
you have to give them a kiss. A kiss? No way! Not you, Toucan. Gerda. Oh, right. Okay. Problem. Kay is um trying to shoot me with arrows, so how would I get close enough to even give him a kiss? I think we'll just have to run as fast as we can and dodge the arrows. We? Gerda helped both of us to freedom we owe her. Yeah, you're right. We got you, Gerda. Thanks. You guys ready? Woohoo! Yeah. Let's go! <laughs> Hello. Snow Queen! That's right, kids. The Snow Queen! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Snow Queen is beautiful. In fact, she looked just like Gerda had dreamed, shimmering from head to toe. She certainly didn't look evil. You're the most sparkly lady I ever saw. Thank you. May I give you a little kiss? The Snow Queen leaned in and was just about to give Toucan a little peck on the head when Gerda remembered her dream. No. Toucan! That's how she freezes you! Oh, that's so not cool. Oh, did I do that? Silly me. <gasps> Wait, are all these ice sculptures real animals? Of course. Aren't they lovely? You are evil, and I know you took my friend Kay, but we're here to save him. Save him? But Kay loves it here. Impossible. You're an evil queen, and you brainwashed him. I'll show you. Kay, come here. Yes, my queen. Kay, would you tell this girl that you're happy here? Kay, no! You like the beach and the sun and hanging out with me. Don't you remember? I'm very happy here. See, he's the snow prince. And you can be the snow princess if you like. No way! Then you can be my prisoner. Hey! Gerda! You want some too, reindeer? It's Clyde. Come on, Snow Prince, let's go. Well, I guess being free for a day was pretty cool. Don't talk like that, Clyde. We're gonna bust out. You'll be free again, we'll save the toucan, and I'll rescue Kay, you'll see. But how, Gerda? Did I mention I was a Girl Scout? I don't even know what that means. It means that I can save us. OMG, I love it. Oh, cool. Wait, I don't get it. What does that do? Conjure up some kind of magic? Pretty much. Fire melts ice. It's kind of like magic. Let's go. Safety first. Gerda and Clyde found Kay alone, shivering and looking miserable. He was almost blue from the cold. Kay? Do the kiss thing. Don't rush me. This is a big step in our relationship. How's my breath? <gasps> You're just saving his life, remember? Not getting married. Yeah, yeah. Gerda? Kay! Oh, you're back! What happened? You were captured by the evil Snow Queen. She froze your heart, but I saved you. Really? How? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> You got a little something on your face there. Yoo-hoo, Snow Prince. Where are you? Ah, Snow Queen, let's go. Wait, we gotta get Toucan. What happened? You got frozen, but don't worry, we're going home. Florida, baby. Woohoo! Yay, I'm so happy. Wait, did you save me with a kiss too? Don't worry about it. Ooh. K and Gerda sitting in a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Hush up, Toucan. We gotta go save the rest of these animals. Thank you. Thank you. Now we can go. Guys, hop on. One, two, three, blast off. Whoa, you're doing it, Clyde. You're flying. How about that? I am. I knew you could. Good timing, by the way. Snow Prince, where are you going? Get back here. No way. Yeah, see you never. Hooray, they beat the bad guy. Kay and Gerda were so happy to be home again, back in warm, sunny Florida, far, far away from the frozen land of the evil Snow Queen. 
Clyde stayed for a quick visit, swam in the ocean, had some ice cream, but he got homesick and returned to the north. Toucan, on the other hand, was right at home. So, what do you guys want to do next? Build a sand castle? Go to Disney World? Go windsurfing? Maybe some alligator wrestling? What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Storytime with me, Miss Booksy. Today, we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi guys, it's me, Little Red, and I'm here to... I thought you said we're reading The Three Little Pigs. Yes, I know, but we have our special friend, Little Red, helping us tell the story. Okay, let's get back to it. So as I was saying, I'm Little Red, and I have such an epic story to tell you guys. There once was a family of pigs. Family meeting. Coming, Coming Mom. Mom. But first, mud milkshakes? Yeah. Yes! And I want chocolate. Please, can I have the mint chip? And I'll have a worm and crickets milkshake. Gross! Gross! What? I'm unique, okay? Okay, Piggies. We wanted to talk to you guys today because we are so happy that you are growing into big, strong pigs. And we have loved the past 32 years of raising you and having you live in our house and doing your laundry and you not paying rent. But we feel the time. You gotta move out. <gasps> what? No! That can't be. Okay, we knew you wouldn't like this, but I didn't think you would take it this hard. Sorry, you're all grown up now. Bye. Harsh. You'll need to get jobs so you can pay for supplies to build your own houses. When I was your age, I had to walk 52 miles in the snow to my first job. Dad, we already heard this story a million times. Well, it's going to be hard work for you guys, but we believe in you. My little piggies are all grown up. Don't worry, Mom. We got this. Secret sibling cheer? One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family. Stand up and holler. Aw, that's so sweet. And just when the three little pigs were amping themselves up to go out and look for jobs, there was a knock on the door. Who are you? Hey, don't be rude. Hello, who might you be, girl covered in red? I'm Little Red. Hmm, makes sense. I was wandering through these woods to get to my grandma's house. See, she's sick with a cold and I wanted to go cheer her up. <laughs> This story sounds so familiar, like a fairy tale my grandma read me when I was a little piglet. Anyways, I'm super exhausted and kind of just bored from walking around so long, so do you think I could chill with you guys for a bit? Well, we were just gonna go to downtown. We're getting jobs and moving on up. You could come with us. That sounds like an adventure. I'm sure grandma will be fine for a little while longer. <laughs> Yay! Yay! But before you go, would you like a slug shake? Um, I'm afraid to ask what that is, so no thank you. <laughs> that was so funny. So Little Red and the three pigs went off to the town. They had fun and got to know each other. They played guessing games. Can you guess my favorite color? Hmm, that's easy. Red? Yellow, actually. Can you guess my favorite snack? Bacon. <gasps> Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Woo, that was a close one. They smelled the flowers. They made new friends. They stopped for a bite to eat. They ran around in circles. They basically did everything except find new jobs. This has been fun and all, guys, but we should really find somewhere that's hiring. But finding a job is so hard. <laughs> if only there was a place that we could go that helped pigs get jobs. If only it was that easy. Um, guys? Kind of like the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs? Yeah, let's go. So what brings you to us, the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get the jobs? Well, isn't it kind of obvious? What kind of jobs do you have available? Oh, many things. Cupcake makers, we need builders, painters, molecular biologists. Huh? We need the gingerbread decorators, truck drivers, teachers, professional nappers. Ooh, I want that one. Oh, I am so sorry, but none of these jobs are available right now. Oh. oh. Well, we need something. Our mom and dad are going to be super mad at us. Well, why don't you tell us what the pigs can do immediately? Yes, I have just the thing. Hey, you look familiar. Who, me? Sounds suspicious. Let's keep reading. 
Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you were saying that you had just the right jobs for these pigs? Yes, I have just the thing that'll bring home the bacon. What? <gasps> oh, ahem. no offense, just a figure of a speech. Uh-oh, this doesn't sound good. I have the perfect job for you three. There's an opening at the candy factory. Ooh. Oh. You can start the day. Here, sign these papers. What do they say? Don't worry about it. The pigs will have the best jobs in town. Hmm. I hope I can taste test candy. I hope I can swim in a candy pool. I just hope we can make some money soon so we can buy building supplies. You guys are going to do great. So the three pigs went to the first day of their job. Little Red followed along for support. They were nervous and excited. It took the pigs a little getting used to. I mean, they never worked a day in their life. They made mistakes. They were sometimes late. They sometimes said the wrong thing. Yeah, boss, I literally didn't work today. All I did was eat candy. Uh, oops. <laughs> that was hilarious. Sometimes they ate way too many pieces of candy and got belly aches. But after a while, they saved up enough money to build their own houses. So Little Red went with the first pig to the store. So what do you think you need to build a strong house? Hmm, I want something quick, because I'd rather be doing anything else besides building. How about this? No way. One drop of rain and the paper will disintegrate. Marshmallows? No. Slime? No. OK, fine. Straw it is. Oh. I don't think straw is going to be super strong. Too bad, I'm bored, let's go. <sighs> Hamon, I don't know about this. Oh, did I tell you his name is Hamon? So Little Red helped Hamon build his house of straw. It looked okay, but Little Red knew it probably wasn't a very strong house. Wow! <laughs> you did it! It looks nice. Uh-oh, you better watch out. Well, let's see how this goes. I am so tired. I need a nap. While Hamon napped, Little Red called her grandma to check on how she was feeling. Hey, Grandma. What's up, girl? How you feeling? Oh, Red, I am so happy to hear your voice. I hope you don't mind, but I might be a little late because I'm helping some friends. Of course. You are such a good friend. You rest and drink some tea, Grandma, and I'll be there soon. Love you. Bye. Suddenly, there was a loud noise coming from outside. It sounded like an engine of some sort. Little Red ran to the window to see what was happening. Oh, little pig! Little pig! It's that interviewer guy. He really looks familiar. The sound of the leaf blower woke Hamon up from his slumber. What? What's happening? Where am I? Is this my house? Yeah, dude. This is your house that you built. Remember? But that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs is outside. He looks a little mad. We're a little excited. I'm not really sure. Little pig, let me in, let me in. I don't want to let him in. I have morning breath and this place is a mess. Sorry, you can't come in. Yeah, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Like seriously, this thing is hairy. I need to shave before I see anyone. It's like one little hair. Whatever. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down. That is so not cool. That escalated quickly. Why would he do that? <laughs> My house. I worked so moderately hard on that. What are we going to do? And where did that guy go? But the wolf was nowhere to be found. Come on, let's go to my brother's house. We can crash with him. Oh man, I really hope he chose something stronger to build his house with. I just knew straw was not a good plan. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Little Red and Hamon were running to their brother's house when suddenly they got a call from Mom Pig. Oh, hello, my sweet darling. I miss you so much. How is it going over there? Is everything okay? Eh, ah, what do I say? I don't want her to know about the whole house getting destroyed, thingy. Just be honest. I'm gonna tell her that I'm just going to visit my brother, Hamilton. It's always better to tell the truth. Um, hi, Mom. Doing great. Out for a jog with Little Red. We're going to see Hamilton now. Oh, how nice. <laughs> I only miss you a tiny bit. Oh, so cute.
Gotta go, Ma. We're uh, doing some stretches. We're almost there. I can see him right over there. Hamilton was just getting home from work. Hey, dude, we have a big problem. Yeah, the creepy guy from that place blew my entire house down. How could he do that? It seems like he'd need a lot of air. Like, like... <coughs> he had a leaf blower. I don't know what his deal is, but can we crash with you? Well, I haven't actually finished building my house. Yeah, it looks like it needs a bit of work. What did you use to make it? Uh, I just found a bunch of sticks lying around in the forest. Why? What did you do with all your money? I I'm not going to tell you I spent it all on gummy bears and comic books, but... <laughs> that was so funny. You spent all your money on gummy bears and comic books? Let's just fix this thing, okay? We'll help, I guess. If it means we can stay, fine. So the three of them tried to finish the house of sticks. Just like straw, the sticks were not very strong, so they kept having to fix little parts of the broken house. They tried tape, they used glue, they even tried using chewing gum as adhesive. When they were done, the house looked a little crazy. I guess you could call it rustic. Now that we have so much extra time, since we're not doing annoying things like building a house, let's have some fun! Party, party, party! Yeah, let's play games! Ooh, this is so exciting! Let's eat! And my favorite, let's dance! The two pigs and Little Red played and danced and enjoyed themselves until they realized they were almost going to be late for work. Again. <laughs> Uh, that was a good joke, Hamilton. Whoa, guys, we gotta go. Hopefully your sister Porchetta gets there in time too. But what they didn't realize was that Porchetta was already at work. She had been working overtime so that she could save up lots of extra money to build a strong house. So when the others got to the candy factory, they were surprised to see her. Why are you working so hard? There's so many better things to do besides work. Ugh. Yeah, Porchetta, you're being so weird. All you're doing is working and not even having fun. Lame. Well, guys, it's important to do your job well. And it's good to take your time. I don't want to rush my house building. Otherwise, something bad could happen to it. Ooh, that makes sense. Bad? Like, I don't know, maybe the house being blown down or something? What? Nothing. Nothing. All right, all right. Let's just do our job so we can go home. So all the pigs and Little Red worked all day. They taste tested candy. They fixed broken machines. They separated sprinkles by color. They took a lunch break. They helped lift heavy chocolate bars. They took a nap break. At the end of the day, everyone was super tired and super ready to go home. Hamon and Hamilton said their goodbyes to poor Cheddar. I'm going to stay and work a little bit more. Whatever. Bye. But while they were at work, the big bad wolf paid a visit to Hamilton's stick house and blew the thing down with a huge fan. What? No, that can't be. And remember, the pigs and Little Red didn't realize it was the big bad wolf yet. What the, what was this dude's deal? Well, the pigs were in for quite a surprise. No, my beautiful, rustic, fragile house. I'll bet it was that guy from the place that helps pigs and other fairy tale characters get jobs. I'm telling you, that guy looks so familiar. I just get a bad feeling around him. Us, Us too. too. What are you going to do now? It's getting dark. I'm totally starving and we have nowhere to sleep. I think you know what you guys have to do. Go find a hot air balloon and fly to Antarctica and change your names forever? No, I think you should apologize for being mean to Porchetta and see if she'll let you stay at her house. Uh, I don't like apologizing. Me neither. Well, sometimes you have to do things you don't want to just because it's the right thing. Uh, you're probably right. Plus, we really need help. This should be interesting. Kids, what do you think is gonna happen next? Let's keep reading. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So Little Red, Hamon, and Hamilton, with their piggy tails between their legs, went to talk to their sister. When they arrived, they were in for quite a surprise. Oh guys, it looks like her house isn't even done yet. 
Uh, hello, Porchetta. We started building like weeks ago. Uh huh. What's taking so long? Hi, guys. Well, it takes time if you want to do a good job. Oh, now I get it. Blech! Who would want to do a good job? I just want it to be fast. I mean, maybe we could have tried a little harder on our houses? Hamon, why don't you tell her what happened? Well, basically, our houses are gone. Kaput, zilch, dunzo. What? How? What happened? I don't know. I mean, you'd think straw and sticks would be... You built your houses with straw and sticks? No wonder they fell down. Well, they didn't exactly fall down. The pigs explained to Porchetta the whole story. She was shocked, but also not 100% surprised, because her brothers were known for always taking the easy route. So if you guys learned your lesson... That we should have stayed with mom and dad? No, that it's important to work hard and take your time doing things the right way. Even if it's really, really annoying? Yes, even if it's really annoying. So what are we going to do to make things right? Well, I guess we should say we're sorry, Porchetta, for being rude to you. That's okay, we're family. Let's build this house together and keep that crazy guy out. Aw, that's so sweet. He kind of looks like a wolf. OMG, that's it. He's the big bad wolf. I've dealt with that guy before. Ah, uh, we pigs definitely don't like wolves. Well, we just need to make this house super strong. I've been using bricks, one by one. Oh man, no wonder you have such strong muscles. Yep. And we should set traps, just in case. So they all worked together and really hard to make a house out of bricks. It was difficult, and they had to take little breaks. You guys, I'm sweating over here. Let's have some lemonade. Oh, I forgot I had a bunch of treats in my basket. Let's have a little picnic. Ooh, cranberry scones, my favorite. <sighs> it's so good, but <sighs> I'm sleepy. And so they all took a well-deserved little rest. While they were sleeping, the big bad wolf showed up. He tiptoed past them so they wouldn't wake up. But when he tried to open Porchetta's front door... Ooh, what is that? Yes, my first trap worked. I'll be back. Whew, that was a close one. Good thinking, Hamon. You saved us. Saved by the slime, yeah. What do you think the wolf wanted? Yeah, are we in trouble? There is something fishy going on here. I guess we do need to set some traps, just in case he comes back. So they set up all different kinds of traps to protect them from the wolf. They set up invisible wire. They filled buckets with glue and feathers. They spread out syrup all over the floor to make them stick and not be able to run away. They made that thingy. Well, the whole house is basically ready. Yay! Secret sibling cheer! Let's do it! One pig, two pig, three pigs a dollar. All for the family, stand up and holler! Yeah! While the pigs in Little Red were feeling really proud of themselves, Mom and Dad Pig were at home, feeling, well... Oh, 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 I miss my little piglet so much! That's so sad. Darling, they are 32 years old. It was time for them to move out. But there's so much more I wanted to teach them. They don't even know how to make beef bourguignon yet. That doesn't sound too necessary, but that is your favorite dish. What are we supposed to do now? I guess we could sit on these chairs and stare out the window for the rest of our lives. So yeah, you could say they weren't dealing with the separation too well, but back at the brick house, things were getting interesting. So you just take these two corners and put them together like this. Wow, that was easy. Yeah, we really could have been doing this ourselves for the past, oh, 20 years. Mom and Dad really did a lot for us. It feels good to be on our own. I love learning new things. And next, I'm going to teach you to balance a checkbook. Whoa, now you guys really are grown-up pigs. The pigs in Little Red were so excited about being grown-ups now that they did so many grown-up things. They went food shopping, they paid bills, they even babysat their neighbor's baby piglets. They did a great job. I am so proud of us. But one thing we haven't faced yet, the wolf. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, 
story time. So like I said, the pigs in Little Red were doing lots of grown-up things. Only problem was, they hadn't faced the wolf yet. Was he going to come and try and blow the brick house down? That wolf may come back soon, but we can't wait around forever for bad things to happen. That's true. So what is something really grown up you can do right now? I, I, I really want to visit mom and dad. <clears throat> I mean, we, we should go say hi or, or whatever. I hope they'll be okay. You're right, Hamilton. We'll show them how responsible we'll be in now. Little Red, you coming? Yeah, this I gotta see. <laughs> so they all went for a visit to the pig parents. Luckily, Mom Pig had that classic maternal instinct and must have predicted their return because warm, freshly made chocolate chip cookies were waiting for the pigs when they arrived. Finally, all of my little piglets under one roof again. Oh, how I missed you. While we're here, maybe you guys should be honest with your parents about what happened to your houses? Well, um... Come on, guys. Honesty is the best policy. We were being kind of lazy. And we took the easier road. But it didn't turn out so good. Yeah, we made our houses out of sticks and straw, and then this wolf guy came and blew our houses down. <gasps> Don't worry, they learned their lesson and have been working really hard to make one big strong house. You. <sighs> Here, we have some pictures of what we've been up to. Oh, so cute. I mean, not everything went according to plan. <laughs> oh yeah, this one time we were cooking soup. And we mistook sugar for salt. So we ended up with this really sweet broccoli soup. <laughs> I mean, I didn't hate it. It was kind of good. <laughs> we are so proud of you all. You really are growing up and learning how to do things for yourselves. Well, we learned from the best. You guys. Aww. We really should be going. See you all soon. And Little Red, thanks for helping our piglets. You betcha. Bye. See you Bye -bye. later. Love See ya. So Little Red and the pigs headed towards the fairy tale forest to get to their brick house. They were enjoying the stroll when suddenly they almost ran into the white rabbit. Man, what is going on? Now this guy looks really familiar too. I'm late, I'm late, I'm very, very late. Well, don't let us stop you. It looks like you're on a very important mission. I am. And I'm late, but the strangest thing happened just a moment ago. Uh, are you gonna tell us, or what? Oh, right. Well, I was hopping along, minding my own beeswax, when I ran into this big wolf-looking guy. The, the wolf. wolf! The big bad wolf? Oh, no. Right, and he said he was also running late. Yeah? To go see a family of pigs. Ah! And you all look like pigs to me, so I thought I'd just let you know. Thank you, sir. We gotta go. They ran back to their brick house, but luckily when they arrived home, no wolf was in sight. <sighs> oh, looks like we beat him here. Well, all our traps are ready, so let's just wait. Little Red and the pigs waited. And waited and waited. But they were abruptly awoken by the sound of their doorbell. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Ah, watch out! Not, Not by, by the hairs, hairs of our chin chin chins. Well, then I'll hop and I'll pop and I'll... Okay, you can come in. Sheesh, finally. Whoa! Sounds like the first thing worked. Pigs, where are you? We're in here. Come find us. When the wolf came through the next door, a big bucket of glue dumped on him from above. Then Hamon tossed a bag of feathers on top of the glue. He kind of looked like a chicken. We don't know why you've been so mean to us and destroyed our houses, but you're not getting this one too. Yeah. Oh, there you are. He started to run towards the pigs, but got stuck on the syrup on the floor trap. What in the world? Ha! Gotcha. Now you're gonna tell us what you've been up to, or else. Ooh, this is so exciting. Let's keep reading. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So the pigs and Little Red had finally caught the wolf. He was stuck in a syrup on the floor trap. 
Sounds sticky, but also kind of yummy. See here, Wolf, you gotta answer some tough questions. Me? Yeah, you. First, where did you get that shirt? It's so cute. Well, it was on sale at... No, stop. We want to know why you're here. Yeah, why did you blow down my house of straw? And why did you blow down my house of sticks? And will you reimburse me for the $4 it took to make it? Hello, I need the cash. And honestly, you've really scared me. I have a fear of leaf blowers. And I have a fear of little pieces of wood. Um, aren't sticks basically little pieces of wood? And you built your house out of them? Maybe. Whatever, Little Red. <laughs> that was hilarious. And I'm afraid we are never going to get to the bottom of this if you two goofballs don't hush and let the wolf answer our questions. Right. Okay, Mr. Uh, wolf Guy. My friends call me Fred. Whatever. You destroyed my friends' houses, and you scared us, and you even came back to destroy this house. What gives? Well, uh... Tell us. The truth is, it was all an accident. What? Remember those papers I had you sign when you got the job? Yeah? Well, they're actually the deeds to your unbuilt houses. How dare you? What are deeds again? Well, basically, I had them sign over the houses to me so that I own them. You lied to us. Sort of. Oh, that's so not cool. Why did you come back here then? Well, I was planning my next heist when I got a special visit from the fairy godmother. Do da, do da, do. Oh, big bad wolf. Ah, what? Who? What are you? Um, you don't know me. I'm pretty famous. You look a little like my grandma, but with wings. Well, I'll have you know, I am the fairy godmother. Okay. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. We need to talk. But I don't like talking to all the people. Pardon me, so rude. And I am only 3,856 years young anyway. You're right, I am sorry. Old people are lovely. I'm just a little bit on edge. Well, you should be, because I know you have been up to no good. Excuse me? I have only been tricking a bunch of innocent and a little bit dense pigs into signing their entire life savings and their houses over to me. What's so bad about that? Wow, that is so mean. Um, are you kidding? You know, now that I say it out loud, it does sound uh, pretty bad. So, Wolf, well, deep down, you know it's not kind of trick people. But they are not people. They are pigs. You know what I mean. And it's important to not be selfish. And you should think of others. I know, I know. You need to make it right. Go apologize and fix it. So that's basically what happened with the fairy godmother. Wow. And that's why I came to each of your houses to apologize and give you new papers to sign. You promise these are the right papers? That you aren't tricking us again? Yes, of course. These papers will fix everything. One question, though. Why were you always talking about huffing and puffing and... Oh, simple. I have the worst asthma. I'm pretty much always huffing and puffing. And why did you blow our houses down with fans and leaf blowers? I was bringing those to you as a housewarming gift. But I'm not so good with machines, so I lost control. So you blew the houses down by accident? Pretty much. Oh, now I get it. Well, I guess we should also apologize to you, because I think our traps were a little bit mean. Yeah, they didn't make me feel too good. But it does taste good. We are sorry. We just needed to defend ourselves against home invaders. I get it. Well, it sounds like everything is all worked out. I think there's only one thing left to do. What? what? Have a dance party! Yay! So the new friends danced and danced and danced. Porchetta was actually a really good dancer. Check this out. Little Red, on the other hand, was pretty silly. After all was said and done, they had a great time together. But Little Red realized something. My grandma. Little Red hadn't exactly forgotten about visiting her grandma. After all, she had kept checking on her and knew she was feeling better, but still. Well, I have to get there fast. Anyone have an electric scooter? Those things are awesome. Actually, I can call in a favor. I know a guy. Ooh, sounds interesting. Look out below. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye, Red. Well, I think it's time for cupcakes. Yay! Yay. Oh, 
I just love happy endings. What a great story. Thanks for coming. Bye.